All right, perfect. And then Lauren, do you want to go ahead and say hi? Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren. I'm an assistant director of admission as well, and I work with transfer students. Excellent. All right. And then later on, I actually have, um, for those of you who are excited to hear about academics, um, Jenna is on our call right now. Dr. Voss is here. Um, <laughs> she's waving. So Jenna, I'm going to go ahead and take you off um, mute real quick as well. So you can say a quick hello um, and then sure. we can get started. <laughs> <laughs> hi hi sorry I'm like nerded out with my uh, headset and glasses I'm Jenna Voss I'm a um, professor in deaf education so I am just gonna linger on the call until until it's my turn <laughs> excellent thank you Jenna we appreciate that all right so um, before I get started too I do want to let you all know as you can kind of see um, I am in my apartment. We're uh, here during the virus, and so we're all kind of working from home right now. Um, and it looks like we have another person adding to the chat. So we'll add this person as well. Um, I do want to give a disclaimer. Um, I wish I could show you them, but they're a little rambunctious. I do have two kittens. Uh, they're one years old right now. Um, and I've closed the door to um, where I am right now in my apartment, um, but they really love being right up under my feet. And so they'll probably be scratching at the door sometimes. Um, so just ignore that if you hear the scratching noise, um, they're just really excited to um, know that so many people are interested in Fon Fon. So, um, but this is our, um, our first kind of foray into a virtual preview day. So obviously we are um, at some very unfortunate times where we can't have you all on campus. We can't have you, um, you know, talking to you in face, but we still wanted to connect with you all. We wanted to make sure that you all got the information about Fonfon that you felt was necessary to help you um, decide if Fonfon was a good fit for you and help you really kind of just see what we have to offer. We have an amazing selection of services, whether they're academic, they're social, um, that we really um, implement on our campus to make sure that every individual student is successful. Um, and so we definitely want to take some time to talk to you a little bit about those today. And I definitely also wanted to as well have you here not just from the admissions team, uh, but from someone who works in the academic side to really share with you what it's like being a student here at Fonfon, what it's like in the classroom, um, and what you can really expect uh, from not just the staff, but also the faculty and how they care for each individual student. So I'm going to go ahead and just start off with uh, Fonfon in the admissions and, you know, who are we, what do we do, what are some uh, very important things you need to know about Fonfon. Um, so let's go from there. So uh, Fonfon University is a small, private, Catholic-affiliated um, liberal arts school within the St. Louis area. We're located, if you haven't seen our campus before, in Clayton, Missouri, which is a subset of St. Louis. Uh, so it's really close to the St. Louis Galleria Mall. It's really close to the Delmar Loop. It's close to a lot of really awesome things within the city landscape of St. Louis. Um, you know, walkable distance and very short driving distance from a lot of different activities off campus. But of course, we have a lot of good stuff going on campus as far as, far as student activities. And so we'll definitely talk a little bit about those as well. Um, but uh, Fonfon is on, um, on average, our class sizes are about 15. Um, our total undergraduate student population is actually just under uh, 1,000. And so what that means is that each individual student on our campus is afforded the care of being a person, not just being a number, uh, not just being someone who really has to fight and advocate for themselves. Uh, you have a lot of people on our campus that are able to give you the time and attention and care that you need as an individual to be able to be successful in whatever major you're looking into and whatever career path you're looking into. Um, we have a lot of uh, people and resources to make sure that you are a, able to, to soar higher, as we like to say. Um, so I want to start off when thinking about Fonfon, um, talking about the admissions process. That's my bread and butter. I, like I said, I'm the Associate Director of Admission. So really when it comes down to the admissions process, what does that look like for each individual student? Now I know that we do have some students on the call right now that have already gone through this process. Um, hopefully it's been an easy process for you to go through. Uh, but for those of you who have no clue about the admissions and financial aid, um, 
when it comes to Fonbon. Let's talk about that. So um, Fonbon University is a, um, a university that is on a rolling admissions basis. Essentially what that means is that students can apply anytime from July 1st of their senior year, so right even before they start senior year classes in high school, to um, right up to the time that classes start at Fonfon, and there is no deadline as far as that goes. Uh, give us about two to three weeks to review your application, uh, and then we can make an easy decision and you can join us. Uh, so what does that decision process look like and what does the application process look like? So our application is always going to be a free application. Uh, we don't believe in charging you 30, 50, $80 application fees um, just to find out if you can get into Funk Fun. We think that that's really silly. Uh, we want you to afford you the opportunity to really, um, you know, engage in this process with us without having to be, you know, out, you know, a certain amount of dollars. So it is a free application. It is an online application. So it's 2020 now. Um, most schools, you know, are not taking any uh, paper applications anymore. We've gone completely virtual with that. So it is on our website. If you go to fontfun.edu, um, there are going to be tabs at the top. Uh, and one of those tabs is going to encourage you to apply to Fonfon as either a first-time freshman student, a transfer student, a graduate student, a doctoral student, an international student. We have a lot of a variety of different types of uh, students on our campus. Um, and so it's a free application. It takes about 10 minutes to complete. Um, and then after you finish that application, our application process is pretty simple in the fact that we don't require essays or personal statements or letters of recommendation or um, you know personal interviews or anything of that sort for you to be admitted if you are at or above our automatic admission requirements. So what are those? So currently we're actually um, we've made some changes to the application admission requirements knowing that with the virus going around uh, it's hard for students to take or even retake the ACT or SAT um, standardized tests. So we've kind of said, we wanna be flexible with these students. We wanna make sure that we meet them where they're at. So we can just look at your high school transcripts. And um, if you have a 2.75 or higher, we'll send you over to a soft review. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to be admitted. Um, now, if you have taken the ACT or the SAT and do submit those scores and you wanna be considered for um, any of the higher scholarships, um, our admission requirements are as follows. Either you have a 2.5 and a 20, a 2.5 GPA and a 20 on the ACT, or you have a 3.0 GPA and an 18 on the ACT. Um, if you have at or above those admission requirements, we can automatically accept you. So that's exciting for you to know. Uh, for those of you who haven't gone through the admissions process, look at what your grades are looking like right now. If you've taken the ACT or SAT, look at what that looks like. And you can tell yourself right now, if I apply to Fonfon, yes, I will be admitted. And then we'll go through the process with you. Now, here's the thing as well. We understand as a, again, small liberal arts school that your ACT score, your SAT score, they don't define who you are as a student, right? Um, they don't tell us exactly what we need to know about you to know whether or not you're going to be able to be successful in our academic setting, in our social setting. Um, and honestly, neither does your GPA. They're both good indicators, but they're not the only indicators that we want to look at when we look at the whole student. So let's say you do have below our automatic acceptance requirements, um, whatever those may be for you. We'll uh, take a look at your application. You can still apply, send us your high school transcripts, or your um, if you're a transfer incoming transfer student, send us your um, community college transcripts or your um, four-year institution transcripts. Um, send us your test scores if you have them. Uh, and then we'll get back to you about what else we might need from you to really judge whether or not you'd be a good fit for our institution. Um, and so that might be a letter of recommendation from a coach, from a supervisor, from a teacher, from a professor. Uh, that might be um, a personal statement stating, you know, why I think Fonfon might be a good choice for me. What do I think I want to get out of the college experience? Uh, we just want to know a little bit more about you and who you are. Um, that might be a resume um, showing what you have done outside of the classroom uh, when it comes to, you know, your qualifications and your in, uh, 
know, who you are as a person. So of course you're not gonna have a 4.0 sparkling GPA and a 36 on the ACT. If you're involved in athletics and you're also, you know, president of this honor society, or if you're doing this and that and the other, or if you're working, working uh, part-time or full-time, you know, there are a lot of different variables that come into play when we're thinking about a student's academic success that aren't necessarily tied to your academic um, you know, performance. So we definitely wanna take a look at all of that good stuff before we make a finalized decision on whether or not you might be a good fit for Fonfon. And if we do come back and say, hey, um, at this time, we can't actually offer you admission to Fonfon, that's not ever gonna be a, you're never going to come to Fonfon. That might be just a, it's not a great fit right now, but what we wanna see is maybe take another semester at community college or at another school, um, and we can actually work with you one-on-one -on -one to tell you exactly which classes you should take uh, to be able to transfer in um, classes that you will actually be able to use to, towards your degree requirements at Fonfon. We can tell you all that information, so you take those classes, and then we can reevaluate your application um, as you decide to transfer into Fonfon. So um, we do like to keep our admission practices pretty flexible. Again, your ACT score, your GPA, these arbitrary numbers don't tell us the full story about who you are as a student, who you are as a person, and whether or not you might be able to be successful on our campus. Um, so that's the application process. Now, once we've gone ahead and um, you've applied, you've been accepted, we work with you hand in hand through the entire rest of the process. We never want to um, you know, put you at a disadvantage or have you not really know what's going on. So we are, I, I think, pretty good at communicating with you through email, text messages, um, we, you know, Phone, uh, you know, call. Um, we want to make sure that we're uh, getting in touch with you in, in any way that we can that's, you know, easy for you. Um, and we'll work with you through the entire process. So what does that look like? Once you've applied and been accepted, we start working on your financial aid. So if you have already gone through this process, you know about the FAFSA and what that all is. But for those of you who don't, um, the FAFSA is the free application for student financial aid. Um, and that form is an online form that you fill out to see what federal and state aid you might be eligible for um, through the government, but also what extra aid you might be eligible for through FONFON. So when you're thinking about the financial aid process, the one thing that you do wanna remember is that every student who applies and gets accepted to FONFON automatically receives a merit scholarship. Uh, so that's actually gonna range from 6,500 all the way up to $15,000 a year based on your ACT and your GPA, um, or if you're doing the test optional um, process, then just based on your ACT, or excuse me, just based on your GP, GPA. Um, and so you're automatically gonna qualify for a merit scholarship. Now, for those of you who are um, coming from Missouri, we also do have the A-plus program recognition scholarship. So for those of you who are participating in the A-plus program, we know that that's an extra program. You don't actually have to um, do that to graduate from high school, but that is something that kind of shows us, you know, you're really, you've got your head in the game. You're thinking about your next steps. You're thinking about the college mentality, and we want to just award that. And so um, if you do the A-plus program and you complete that, then you will earn an extra $1,000 per year um, added onto your scholarships. Now, if you're coming from a Catholic high school, and this isn't just Catholic high schools in Missouri, but any Catholic high school anywhere, um, then we can also um, award you the $2,000 um, Catholic high school award. And that's just saying, you know, Catholic school to Catholic school, we've got to take care of each other. And so we want to make sure that we award that uh, scholarship as well. Now, going back to that FAFSA, that FAFSA will tell us what other financial aid you're looking at. Um, so you might be eligible for uh, federal grants for loans for uh, the Fonfon grant, which is essentially our way of saying, listen, we are an expensive institution because we are a private institution, but we really do believe in serving that, that higher need, serving the student where they are. Um, and no one has thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to afford a college education. If you do, let me know. Um, but um, the reality is higher education is very expensive and we want to make sure that we are um, not making you take out tons and tons and tons of loans or pay an absorbent amount out of pocket just to be able to get your education. So the Fonfon grant actually ranges from $1,000 to $18,750 on top of your merit scholarship, on top of your A plus scholarship, on top of your Catholic high school recognition award um, to be able to make it a more financially feasible opportunity. So on average, I'll tell you that our students 
um, when they're thinking about an out-of-pocket cost for Fon Fon, um, they're looking at, on average, about $5,000 to $6,000 out-of-pocket each year, which is nothing compared to our actual costs, which are, um, if you're looking at tuition and student fees, $27,260 a year. And then if you're living on campus, then that number is actually going to raise up to be uh, $38,136 a year, which is a lot of money, right? I don't know anyone that just kind of has that chilling out in your back pocket. But like I said, we have tons of other financial aid opportunities through us and through the federal and state governments to be able to um, help cut that cost down substantially. So that's the financial aid process. So once you have finished the FAFSA and made sure that you've added us on the FAFSA as one of the schools that you're interested in, we can go ahead and take a look at what federal aid, what state aid you're eligible for, what more aid through FONFON you might be able to receive. And then we'll send you a financial aid award package that shows you everything that you're getting from us, everything you're getting from the federal and state government. And then we actually, um, about a week after we send you that financial aid package, if not less, we actually call you or we text you or we email you and we say, hey, um, we know that financial aid is the hardest thing to really kind of wrap your mind around when it comes to Fon Fon, uh, when it comes to any school really. And so we really just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we are um, giving you a financial aid package that actually does look realistic to you and can work with your family's financial situation. Um, and we actually are going to talk a little bit more about just in general financial aid at the end of this uh, presentation. So we'll kind of go into uh, some of your other opportunities if you get a financial aid package from us or from anyone else um, and it doesn't look realistic, but I just wanted to kind of uh, give you a chance to, to know a little bit more about that. So outside of the admissions process, outside of financial aid, what else makes FONFON special? Uh, what else um, do you need to know about FONFON? And I think the one thing that you really need to know about, and I've kind of already alluded to this, but you're not a number. At Fon Fon. Like I said, your average class size is 15. Student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1. What that means is that your professors know who you are. They know what your name is, what your college aspirations are, what your career aspirations are, and they, they're able to really speak to that and able to really help you and mentor you and guide you towards what you need from them, uh, from other staff on campus, to really be able to be successful. And that shows in our numbers. You know, I'm a numbers guy, so I like to look at the stats and I won't bore you with everything, but when you're looking at our uh, career outcomes, so that students who have graduated from college, uh, graduated from Fon Fon specifically, and have either been, you know, placed in a graduate degree program or are, you know, just working full time after Fon Fon, 96% of our students who graduate report back within six months of graduating saying, hey, I've got a job in the field that I studied to go into, or I am in grad school, I'm in med school, I'm in law school, I'm in that higher level of education that I need to eventually go into what I'm looking to go into. Um, now, that is 96% of students, even though the majority of our students actually come in and they, they're not really too sure what they wanna major in. And again, that's a part of the liberal arts experience that, experience that really is special. You don't have to know when you come to Fon Fon what you wanna be when you grow up. You know, I have plenty of people, I actually just had my 29th birthday yesterday, um, and uh, you know, I have plenty of friends who are my age or even older who still don't know what they wanna be when they grow up, right? Um, you don't have to rush yourself through that process of figuring out what it is that you want to see yourself doing career-wise, life-wise. We help guide you through that process. Yeah. Um, and so even if you do come in with a specific major, um, you're gonna take classes in a little bit of everything. You might take a cybersecurity class. You might take a fine and performing arts class. You might take a class in you know, government or something that you've never really thought about doing at all, but it kind of helps to um, allow you to explore the different academic options that we have, as well as really open and expand your mind. Um, the liberal arts education is very important. I think it's um, important to realize that you are not just a psychologist or a teacher or a um, accountant, you are um, someone whose career fits in very nicely to the global perspective. So you need to understand a little bit about other disciplines to be able to really kind of figure out where you fit, where your role is in our society and how what you do and what your, um, your role is, what your job is affects other areas. Um, and so it's very important to us that you are studying different things besides what you wanna get a major uh, degree in. Um, and again, Jenna's gonna talk a little bit more about academics, of course, in a little bit, actually, I have about a minute left until I uh, have her log back in. Um, but the academic side of things is very uh, special on our campus. 
um, and really works towards preparing the well-rounded student. The well-rounded student also means that we have to um, give you opportunities to get involved and get connected outside the classroom. Now, the stats with this is that 85% of your time once you're in college is spent outside the classroom. Part of that's studying, part of that's sleeping, part of that's eating, but also part of that is really exploring who you are as a person, what, you, what it looks like to be independent from mom and dad if you're coming from you know, high school directly into college or as a transfer student, what does it look like on this next part of my journey to um, in life? And um, so we have about 60 different student organizations on campus. Um, we have about 21 um, athletics. Uh, we're NCAA Division Three on our campus, so we uh, do have a lot of athletics on our campus. Um, and we really encourage students to get involved with these um, organizations. We encourage students to get involved in athletics. We have a ton of different things that you can do on our campus, whether it is getting involved in um, community service, whether it's getting involved in campus ministries, whether it's getting involved in, um, you know, Griffin Gamers, which is an organization for students who really, really like to play video games, but you also know you need to be social. So what do you do? You get together and you play video games, right? Uh, so we have a ton of different student organizations on campus. And we also are very proud of our St. Louis heritage. And so on top of getting involved on campus, we also really encourage students to get involved off campus. Go off campus and explore the different areas that we have right around our campus. Go um, see a movie down the street, go um, get involved in a community theater group, uh, you know, go do all these different things and have this, not just college experience, but this St. Louis experience. Um, it's really, really important for us uh, to have students that are eager to, to learn and to uh, not just sit in the classroom and learn, but also learn from just their interactions with other people in the surrounding area as well. So that's why sometimes we raffle off tickets to cards games and blues games. That's why we uh, encourage students to get a Metro pass when you come to a, a school at Fonfon so that you can really explore the entirety of the St. Louis area. Um, so we really want to make sure that you're not just sitting in your dorm room twiddling your thumbs when you're not at class. You're actually actively engaging in what life looks like as a young adult. Um, so that is a little bit about Fonfon. And again, we're gonna talk a little bit more at the end of this, but I did wanna go ahead and just bring Jenna back in. So Jenna could talk to you a little bit more about, again, the academic side of things on Fonfon's campus. Well, I really enjoyed listening to that uh, spiel, Justin, because it's been a minute since I've heard how we're recruiting folks, but I um, have the privilege of working with the students once they make it to Fontbonne. And so I have a pretty good sense about who, who we attract and who we retain, and, um, and I see that in the classroom and beyond. So I'm Jenna Voss, as I said. I actually graduated from Fontbonne uh, twice, undergrad and grad. I came straight out of high school in a, I went to a, suburban public school um, about, you know, 40 minutes outside of St. Louis proper. And um, so I have a little, uh, while I'm speaking to you about by faculty today, and it's been a good 20 years since I was at Fonfon as a student, um, I did have the student experience there. I lived in the dorm. I um, had a pretty traditional undergrad experience at Fonfon. So um, I think my role is fairly unscripted to talk to you about what it's like to be a student in our academic programs. And I will say that um, you should know we aren't, we aren't the same experience academically as you would find at like a really big D1 school. And so you need to know what is a fit for you. I think as a faculty member, why it's a fit for me and why it's a fit for so many of the students is the um, really personal relationship and connections that are built in and outside of the classroom. So we don't actually have a physical space on campus big like lecture hall style. It doesn't even exist, so certainly we're not planning our courses to be delivered in that form. Um, in non-COVID times, we uh, are really proud of the feel you have when you step on campus and the physical space sort of invites that. So there are these like big old historic buildings with some character and charm. Um, the classes I would say are anywhere from five or six students in a class, like in some of our really specialized programs like fashion merchandising or my program, which is deaf education. And um, when you get deep into your upper level classes, it might be a small cohort as five or six students, all the way up to like 20 or 25 is probably the biggest that we really have enrolling um, in our face-to-face on-campus classes. Uh, 
We are really proud of some signature programs we have. So while you may know what you want to do in college, like Justin was saying, you may not. Um, and you may find something that not every college around has. So some of those are, um, in my department, we have communication disorders and deaf education. So these are professionals who are in the general realm of help giving practices. So they are serving. Um, it's related a little bit to education, a little bit to special education, a little bit to early childhood education, which we have. Um, we also have people who are majoring in speech language pathology. So they would be um, studying to serve folks birth to death across the lifespan in hospital settings and schools and clinics and anything in between. Um, we also have signature programs in areas that are not my expertise, so I'm probably speaking out of turn, but um, really strong reputations for cybersecurity. We had the first or one of the first cybersecurity programs in the region. It's accredited. Our math and computer science department is pretty phenomenal and keeps um, acquiring higher level accreditations, which to a regular person might not mean anything, but to an academic means that they're being vetted by their peers. And so it's a reputable, reliable, um, high caliber program. We also have um, fashion merchandising over in our business uh, program. That has been around since forever and ever, and those um, students do some really cool um, in on the job training. Like while they're in undergrad, they're already interning at different local um, businesses and fashion designers and houses and taking awesome trips. Um, we have a really strong um, family and consumer science program and the the program in dietetics um, is just phenomenal and hard competitive and um, highly sought after and then we have a pretty robust social work program so obviously our neighbors across the street at the university that shall not be named has a huge graduate level um, school of social work and public health but our program is really proud of our undergrad program so if that's a career that you're like not sure what that's about um, you can lean into that at the undergrad level even you don't have to wait for a master's degree um, if I get to meet you in person or you get to be unmuted after we're done recording, I will try to convince all of you to have a career in deaf education, uh, but that's just because it's been really powerful and exciting for me. But um, in, in all seriousness, like there is a lot of choice, even at a small liberal arts college like ours. And the really cool part that Justin was getting at is um, what does liberal arts mean? That, that was like a term that was thrown around all the time that I didn't really appreciate, but it means that we care that you are developing as a whole person. So faculty understand and know that you have a life outside of just our coursework. We, we want you to be um, social beings. We want you to be uh, in service to the community, though like local community and the global community you will see major connections in many if not all classes about like why is what you're learning about in this ivory tower this academic bubble why does that even matter why does it matter for a career why does it matter like being a good human <laughs> um and we want you to be making those connections so there's lots of like practical and applied um experiences and opportunities for you it feels so weird talking to like a black screen without any feedback. So if you have an, um, a question, I would love to answer it. And there's a chat box. If you're on the laptop you or your computer, you can click the chat bubble at the bottom and type something into the chat. And if you're on phone, I'm presuming, Justin, it's okay if I tell them that they can still um, unmute and ask a question. And you do that by uh, hitting star six on your phone to unmute. Um, I know I'm supposed to be talking to you about academic programs. I will also say um, as a student at Fompon, it was really a cool place to develop as a leader. Um, and what I mean by that is you can have an idea either that comes from your coursework or comes from your job or your real life and think of like, how can I indulge that or expand that or connect about that on campus? And so while we may have 60 some odd clubs and groups, chances are you'll find something that fits you but if not you can start one right like the beauty of being in a smaller kind of university program is that you know people so you know who's serving the food in the cafeteria you know who's cleaning the dorms at night you know your faculty and you can approach them and you see them on campus and you see them at community and campus events and so um i think that is 
really powerful that you aren't you don't have to sort of segment or separate like your real life and your university life. It's, it's melding together. Um, help me out. Any other questions or comments or, um, I think one thing that's happening now, given the COVID-19 pandemic is that, um, if you're in high school, I don't know a lot about you at this point, but if you're in high school, if you're at a community college, you have already been impacted by um, this events of the spring. And so we've already seen in our own families and my own kids, um, like online and at home learning programs. So the same happened for FOMFON, right? We had to recognize like when it was no longer safe to have our folks on campus together in mass and we had to respond accordingly. Um, I have been watching how other institutions have done that. Some um, went straight away to like uploading everything asynchronous online. You log in, you do your business, and you're done. I will say that like in true Fontmont character, no one wanted to do that. Faculty were like, what? Like, how are we possibly going to keep up the relationship and the learning and knowing our students if we we didn't do that. So quite nimbly, there was a real creative spread of how faculty transitioned. So some of us are teaching online, like where we're screencasting videos of ourselves and uploading discussion threads. Um, a whole lot of faculty have been running Zoom meetings, just like this one, where they are synchronously meeting with their students or keeping Zoom office hours where folks are like dropping in and checking in, sometimes not even about course content. And then I also teach in graduate programs that we have at FAMON that I'll recruit you to later. Uh, but our graduate programs, we're already using Zoom technology for much of our teaching, right? Because we're serving people who have full-time jobs in a profession and are learning in the afternoons and evenings. And so we were pretty nimble and already doing this kind of instruction. So we've kept that up and there's been everything in between. I share that with you today because I think it, um, it, demonstrates our values and when people start talking about values if you have always been learning or working at a place where the values match your own you don't even notice it but in my own life when I um, was a student at an institution not Fan Ban where they valued something that was different than my own I began to feel it right I felt like they were pushing me through. I felt like there were requirements that weren't really making sense for my experience in my life. I felt like things that my faculty supervisors and mentors wanted for me were not necessarily things I wanted for myself. And so it became really obvious that there was a mismatch of values. So what I'm telling you today is, um, I think Fanfan lives into their values. They live into the values of wanting people to develop as local and global citizens we want to be serving, we say it all the time, serving thy dear neighbor without distinction. It's sort of a signature phrase of like, why are we learning about this? We're learning about this to impact the world and um, and leave, leave your mark, right? So just like in the COVID-19, our faculty cared about how our students were, how their families were, how um, the stress that we're all holding because of this. And so our instruction reflected our commitment to like actual well-being of our, of our community. Justin, what else do you want me to touch on? I'm like blabbing and blabbing. <laughs> well, and I love it because that's exactly what we were looking for. We were just looking for you to share um, your experience as a, as again, both an academic on our campus, but also as someone who has had experience um, as a student here. Yeah. Uh, very important, I think. One thing yeah. I was hoping you might be able to share with our students um, is, you know, success stories. So we hear all the time, yeah. you know, oh, this person d is doing a really cool thing now, and this person, you know, got their degree in cybersecurity at Pompon, Pon, and yeah. now they're being an awesome, you know, professional in this area. Um, for you specifically, can you talk to me, to me a little bit about, or talk to us, excuse me, um, about some of the students that you've worked with or that you know of yes. that have just really grown after their experience with Pompon? Pon? Yes. Okay, so um, off the cuff, like that's the other thing about the values is, um, so I, I'm going to sound like a broken record. So I'm in deaf education, which means people who cannot hear <laughs> are deaf people. And there's all kinds of identities around deafness. And the students that we prepare at Fompon um, support individuals who are deaf to learn and to communicate, right? So we do that at the undergrad level and at the graduate level. So 
deaf educators sometimes work in schools and sometimes work in homes supporting parents and sometimes in all kinds of things. So when I think about some students who've come through our deaf education program, that's who I know best. And um, I think about the people that have graduated and I can tell you a whole bunch of stories about them because they keep in touch because Fonfon had such an impactful experience on them that they want us to know what they're doing. So that's the other sort of like um, big strong values is it, it's rare that we have a student who like graduates and is like, peace out, I never, I never want to see you again. Uh, for the most part, it's people who stay in touch on social media and stay in touch attending conferences and networking. So um, a lot of our current grads or people who are soon to graduate are seeking jobs and our alumni are literally emailing me weekly saying like, who's graduating and can you send them our way all over the country and even internationally? So one gal I'm thinking of um, went to our undergrad, um, she went to our graduate SLP program. She just last week defended her dissertation at Teachers College at Columbia University in New York. And um, her name is Elizabeth. She's running an international telepractice program. So she's a speech language pathologist who delivers um, tele-intervention through Zoom, in fact, to families all, she has a client in Ireland and Jamaica and South Africa and India and all over the US. So she's helping to coach the parents who sit at their computer with their child who has a hearing loss or an, a different communication disorder. And she helps the parent know how to work with their child to make the most of their speech language and listening learning. Um, so Elizabeth, while she's doing that do job and telepractice, is also just finished her PhD. So that's a big success story, right? Because if you um, had a positive enough experience with education and you saw how it could impact your career, that you would go on to earn yet another degree. Um, I'm thinking of a local uh, colleague, Radnisha, who went to our undergrad program. She um, had a phenomenal time in undergrad. She stayed for graduate school. I think in her senior year, or maybe it was the summer between senior and grad school, she wanted to um, go to London. And so she did a practicum experience at a school for the deaf in England. And that was so formative for her. Um, now Radnisha is a middle school teacher of the deaf uh, in special school district in St. Louis County, actually at Hazelwood. And I'm so proud of Ranisha because now she is presenting at national conferences. She's serving on an advisory board for um, some of our graduate students. And she even takes our practicum students. So now um, we've sort of come full circle that we can send a student in our undergrad program to learn on the job with her. Um, I'm thinking of, we have, students who they often keep up with me when they are going back to school again and need a letter of recommendation so that's who's sort of on my mind now but we have students who graduate and teach in all the states Texas comes to mind this week we have a student in a PhD program in South Carolina um, Seattle Washington we've been in touch with those folks because obviously Seattle got hit with um, COVID-19 earlier than us so sort of we were watching how it's impacting their schools and community and really learning with and from them so those are a few stories. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it. I was going to say well, I have one more. We have um, Mel Padakoff is an undergraduate student of ours who started a magazine for teens who are deaf called um, Hearing Our Way. And so Mel publishes, she lives outside of New York now, but she publishes this magazine that is sent free to um, students who are deaf in their adolescent and teen years so they can see other deaf kids and hear, um, read stories and do like puzzles, like magazine-ish sorts of things. But um, that was really an example of a cool innovation because while our program prepared her to know how to serve and support learners who were deaf, uh, she certainly took it up a notch to think of like, what impact could she have on the community at large outside of a traditional classroom placement? Just as another example. Awesome. Well, good. So everyone, you've heard a little bit from Jenna. Actually, you've heard a, a lot from Jenna. <laughs> a lot. Speed well, talking. Really good information <laughs> about academics on our campus. And uh, Jenna, I don't want to keep you for too much longer um, if yeah. you need to go. But um, if anyone does have any questions specifically for Jenna or you know, specifically about the academic lens, um, definitely uh, message using the, the Zoom chat. Um, yeah. And we'll kind of, uh, we'll make sure that Jenna either you know, is able to get those questions at, um, 
at a later time. Or if Jenna, if you want to stay on, um, you yeah, have to I can hang out for a little bit, and it's my as long as my family cooperates. So if I duck away, but um, this sort of home office business is always <laughs> interesting. Right. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat box too. So if if someone doesn't feel comfortable asking a question on the call today, you can always get in touch with me. And you know, um, I might not be the faculty person to answer your content area questions, but any of the admissions team or I can certainly connect you with the right expert on campus. Um, so I'll put that in the chat. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jenna. So um, I did want to definitely take some time to, to talk with you about financial aid. But while I'm talking with you about financial aid, um, I do also want to make sure that you all know that you can put in the chat any questions that you all have for myself and my staff as far as the admissions goes. Um, so uh, we'll answer those questions at the end of my financial aid talk, but whether it is about financial aid or if it's just about FOMPON in general, or again, if it's a question for Jenna, um, definitely make sure that you uh, put a question in the chat. Um, or if you would like to ask the, the question in person, uh, you can definitely put in the chat, hey, take me off mute so I can uh, <laughs> talk and uh, we'll definitely do that as well. You know, we're being flexible and kind of on the fly with this. Um, so let's jump right into financial aid. So we talked a little bit about financial aid when it comes to font bond specifically, but one thing that I think, you know, I hit on the head a little bit and Jenna hit on the head as well, is that font bond isn't just about font bond. Font bond is about the, the higher purpose of educating students and helping make sure that students are well-rounded and um, you know, getting what they need from the college experience. And so I talk to um, students all the time and I tell my team this all the time. For us, it's not about Fonfon, it's about the student. We've gotta be very student focused. So I wanna give you just some information that could be really helpful when you're thinking about um, just college in general and how you can uh, work towards affording the experience. Real quick, I um, see that my computer has become unplugged and so my power is going down. So I'm gonna go ahead and power my computer back in um, and then let's talk about financial aid real quick. I'm really good at filling awkward silence. Uh, so I was just gonna add that um, there, they used to have a slogan a long time ago at Fompon that they like got rid of that uh, was like, I'm not just a number, which was sort of bizarre out of context, but it's making me think about um, how much like the financial aid gets starting talking about like numbers again. But I think the reality is like, if Fompon is a right fit for you, you can be assured that like everyone at Fompon wants you to be there, right? We don't want to have a barrier like something as silly as money being the reason why you can't um, reach your potential at our, our place. So while that like, you're not just a number thing is like gone to its grave and no longer being used except for me unearthing it today like I think that is yet another living out of the values of Fompon is that we wouldn't want you to not be able to afford college we wouldn't want you to afford college but not be able to afford your books right like from the beginning to the end once you are in your faculty will be committed to your success there so just adding that a little absolutely and that's so useful to know so um but you know, whether or not Fonfon is gonna be a good fit for you, uh, like I said, I definitely wanna give you some information that could be helpful for you as far as the financial aid goes. So when you're thinking just about financial aid in general, obviously the first thing is gonna be the aid that you're gonna be able to get from the school itself. So um, a lot of schools have actual application processes for different scholarships or grants that you might be able to get from them. For us personally, we actually only have one scholarship that has an actual application process, and it's our Donald Suggs Multicultural Scholarship. Uh, but every other scholarship, every other grant that we give is all going to be based off of information that we're already getting from you. So we're not asking for an application. But for, for some schools that are asking for applications for different scholarship opportunities, I think one of the first questions that you want to ask the um, admission counselor that you're working with um, through that school is, what does the application process look like for scholarships? How do I make sure that I get the most amount of financial aid that I'm going to be eligible for so I can make this opportunity as affordable as I can? Um, because it's, and it's an unfortunate thing, but we're seeing more and more of the data is showing us that um, the, the bachelor's degree, as far as college is concerned, is quickly, quickly becoming the new high school diploma. Everyone needs one, even if you're going into a trade area, you know, there's, there's schools like uh, State Tech and Rankin, um, you'll need some sort of education to further yourself in that path that you're deciding for yourself. And again, like we already talked about, financial aid, or excuse me, um, colleges is, is so expensive that 
we rely on financial aid to be able to even get that, that base level bachelor's degree or that associate's degree or that um, tech school degree that's gonna be able to get us anywhere. So gone are the days where, um, well, and, and obviously this is not a rule, but uh, for the most part, gone, gone are the days where you can really uh, find yourself in that career path that you saw yourself in, you know, uh, 10 years ago when you were, you know, being asked, you know, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Um, without some sort of extra education on top of your high school diploma. So um, when you're talking to these uh, admission counselors, these financial aid representatives at whatever school you're thinking, definitely ask them, how can I make sure that I get enough financial aid from you? We also want to take a look at the, um, the federal and state aid that I was talking to you about as well. So there are things like the Pell Grant, the Access Missouri Grant, um, you have uh, things like the federal SEOG grant. You also have the subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And the way that you qualify for all of that money is by doing the FAFSA. So the FAFSA, like I said, is that free application for student aid. Um, you do the FAFSA online. It's at the studentaid.gov website. And you do your FAFSA um, in your senior year. And then that'll show every school that you've put on that FAFSA what uh, aid you're going to be eligible for. Um, through the federal and state governments. Now, here's the thing as well. Um, the FAFSA is not a fun tool. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. It's not fun. It's not easy. Um, it's, it's been a while since I was in the college mindset, um, if you can't see the gray in my beard. But uh, I will tell you that the FAFSA has grown exponentially more easy now than it was when I was going through the process. But it's still a hard process because it does take some time and it does take you knowing exactly where these financial documents are for your family. And so um, I think a lot of people that I work with, um, when I say FAFSA or when they take a look at the FAFSA for themselves, they're like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? Just know, and this is for not just Fontbon, but for any school, if you have any questions about the FAFSA, if you have any, um, you know, needs as far as uh, how do I do this, or I'm not really sure what this means or what this term is, you can ask that school. You can go to your uh, admission counselor um, and you can say, I need help. This financial aid, this FAFSA is confusing. Um, please help me. And if that admission counselor can't help you, they have a financial aid counselor that can step in and help you as well. Um, and so definitely don't feel afraid to say, I don't know what this is. Um, we don't expect you to understand the entire process. If you did, that means that you would have gone through it before and you've never done it before. Or if you are a transfer student, again, maybe you've done it before, but every school does it differently. So we definitely want you to make sure that whatever school you're, you're looking at, um, you know, make sure that you're asking questions. But when you do the FAFSA, I will say for every single one of you, put this in your heads if you don't leave with any other information besides this, to make sure that you get the most out of your uh, federal and state financial aid, you're gonna wanna do the FAFSA before February 1st. Um, that is the one deadline I tell every student I work with, do the FAFSA before February 1st. Can you do the FAFSA after February 1st and still get financial aid? Sure, you absolutely can, but there are pieces of aid that you might miss out on if you don't do the, uh, the FAFSA February 1st. So the FAFSA opens up October 1st of your senior year. You can start as early as that to get the FAFSA started. Um, and then you can still do the FAFSA and make corrections to it, um, you know, even up until you, the first week of classes in college. Um, but the deadline that I usually give my students is make sure that you do the FAFSA anywhere between October 1st to December 1st, because you don't want to be scrambling. And again, you don't want to miss out on federal or state aid that you might be eligible for. Another thing that I really want to hit on the head, and I don't want to talk too much about financial aid because I can get really in the weeds with it. This is one of my favorite subjects because it is so complicated and I love to help students really understand the ways that they can kind of, I hate to say it, but trick the system to get more financial aid. Um, but the last thing that I really want to think about with financial aid is uh, going to be external scholarships. And again, this is not just with Bon, bon but for any school, most schools will accept any scholarship, any amount of money that you're getting from an external organization or institution um, that you can then apply to your uh, costs at that school. So let's say you are a member of Boy Scouts or a church or a school district that gives scholarships. Um, whatever it is, some sort of organization, whatever it is, you're gonna wanna, you know, when you start thinking about the college search process, talk to people in, in positions at those institutions and say, hey, are there any scholarship opportunities that I can um, 
you know, get? Is there any sort of financial assistance that you can help me with when it comes to the college experience? Um, a lot of times they're going to say no, but sometimes you're going to get lucky and say, yeah, absolutely. There's a scholarship you can apply for through this. And uh, so go ahead and put your application in and we will um, review it. And hopefully at that point you can get 500, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 dollars in external scholarship money that isn't um, related to the school of your choice, but that you can bring into the school of your choice to help you afford that um, opportunity. There are also some websites out there, um, and I really hope that your school counselors are talking to you about these websites because they were really helpful when I was going through the college search process. Um, and so um, there is, for those of you who are from the St. Louis area or surrounding um, area of Missouri in general, um, and also in the Metro East area in Illinois, um, so right next to St. Louis, there's a Scholarship Central website. And write that down if you are um, not aware of this. So the Scholarship Central is essentially just for people in Missouri and then that Metro East area of Illinois, so Belleville, O'Fallon, all that good stuff. So you're not competing for scholarship money from you know people nationwide. It's just from the small pocket in the Midwest. And so there are tons of scholarships there uh, for you to be able to apply for. And again, you know, uh, hopefully earn some more money to be able to put either in your pocket um, so that you can pay for the college experience or that they can send to the college and say, hey, this is a check for this student who earned this scholarship. Make sure that you apply this to their balance. Um, so there's Scholarship Central, there's Fast Web, um, and there's College Board. All of these websites are actually websites that you can actually um, create a profile for. And you can say, you know, this is the type of school that I'm looking at. These are my demographic information pieces. So um, ethnicity and race, uh, gender, um, you know, all these different things that kind of define who you are. Um, you can put in, you know, what you're wanting to study uh, when you get to college. You can put in all these different pieces of information. And then these websites will actually spit out at you different scholarships that you might be eligible for. So it's not going through a list of all these different scholarships and you know, don't know until you click on it whether or not you might be eligible for it. These scholarship websites actually help you out with that and su suggest scholarships that they know almost with certainty that you're gonna be eligible for. So definitely look at, again, Scholarship Central, Fast Web, and uh, College Board. So that's a little bit about the financial aid. Again, I don't wanna to hit too much of that information. Um, in closing, I, I guess I just wanna say, first off, thank you for coming to join us. This is our first time doing anything like this. Um, we're usually, again, doing the preview days in person, but we kind of decided, hey, um, because we're not able to be in person, let's still meet you where you are and uh, talk with you a little bit about Fun Fun and what we have to offer. Um, Jenna, I actually did want to uh, thank you too. You actually reminded me of something that I wanted to make sure the students knew about is that, um, again, St. Louis is so ingrained in Fonfon and Fonfon is so ingrained in the St. Louis area. So um, it is very, very rare that you, if you are from the St. Louis area, if you are living here now, that you don't know someone who graduated from Fonfon is, and is either a teacher that you've had or a guidance counselor or a doctor or a veterinary uh, assistant or whatever it is, you more than likely know someone who has graduated from Fonfon. So you've come to this uh, talk today and, I'm, and again, I'm very glad that you have to hear admissions and academics talk to you about what Fonfon has to offer. But I also really encourage you to ask around the, the community and ask what other people have heard about Fonfon. And if you know someone who's graduated from Fonfon or is currently attending Fonfon, ask them about their experience. Um, I think that um, they're, they're gonna tell you, and, and as, as much as I'll tell you as well, um, the amazing things about Fonfon, they might also tell you some of the things that they didn't like about Fonfon, and that is, I think, important to know as well. Um, but definitely talk to people about what Fonfon has to offer and, um, and you know, just see for yourself whether or not this is a good fit. Um, the reality is there is no school, there is no college or university that is the right size fits all for every single student. Again, it's gotta be about you. It's gotta be what you're looking for, what major you're wanting to get involved in, whether or not you want a small school or a large school or a mid-sized school. It's gotta be what fits you. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, I want every single student to come to Fonfon. That's, that's not what we're about. Um, you've gotta do the work for yourself to really see, is this what I'm looking for? 
And if it is, hey, that's amazing. And you can continue to talk with me and Jenna and the rest of my team, and we'll talk you through this process. If you uh, do a little bit of soul searching and you realize, actually, Bon Bon's not really what I'm looking for, that's okay as well. And I will be so happy to refer you to any of my other colleagues at any of the other schools that I, um, I know about that can, maybe that school is a good fit for you as well. So, um, and then you can tell your friends about Fonbon and how nice they were to you. And then exactly. maybe they'll be a good fit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, at this point, we are reaching right at that four o'clock time. Um, so I definitely wanted to, I haven't seen any uh, questions come through the group chat. Um, so if you do have any questions, definitely feel free to type them in there. And then I'm honestly, free for the rest of the day. Um, so I can definitely answer any questions if you wanna stick on with that. I also really wanted to encourage the students that we have on this call to have an, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of my staff members. So I have about four staff members on our call as well, um, a part of my team. And I really encourage you, whether you have already applied and been accepted and gone through the process, but you have questions about your specific application, or if you haven't gone through this process at all, um, but you want to talk a little bit more about Fompon and, and what we have to offer specifically to you, I definitely want to encourage you to, to do that. So um, we have another you know, 15 minutes or so that I've asked my team to be available uh, today to kind of talk with you through any questions you might have on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and so if you want that, if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting real quick right now, definitely, again, type in the group chat, let me know, and I will assign you to someone um, so you can talk to them one-on-one -on -one about Fompon and uh, what we have to offer you. Um, so I am going to go ahead and just open it up real quick. We're at four o'clock right now. Are there any questions that you all have for me? I have a hand raised over here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, you've sent me a question, okay. So the question is, um, given the global lockdown condition, what is going to happen to international applicants for this coming fall? So that's a really good question. And honestly, we are at the point still where um, this COVID-19 virus is changing so rapidly. And you know, from week to week, we're getting different information pieces um, and things that are changing. Um, so right now, what we're thinking as far as the global lockdown, um, the stay-at-home orders and everything like that, what is going to happen to international applicants for this coming fall, we are still hoping that we are going to be able to start our classes on time for the fall. So classes start in late August. We're hoping that for our international students specifically, that they're able to still get visas to come here um, and that you know we are still able to open up the campus so that they can live on campus um, and go to classes in person and all that. Um, that is still our, that, that's still our dream. Um, we haven't really heard anything quite yet that is really crushing that dream yet. There are some concerns, but we wanna say, okay, this is our plan. We want students to start. If for any reason, and this could be, again, tomorrow or this could be next week, we get um, something that says, hey, that's not gonna happen. We're not gonna be able to have in-person classes. We're not gonna be able to have people come on campus for the start of the fall semester. What is gonna happen for our international uh, student applicants uh, specifically? We are still going to go ahead and do online classes, um, you know, Zoom classes and um, you know, courses that are able to fulfill um, the education that our students deserve. Um, so we're still planning on doing that, but if we can't have you physically on campus, um, then we won't even, and we'll let you know far beforehand whether or not we're opening the campus or not. So you can know for yourself, um, do I need to uh, stay here or, or should I go back home uh, if you're an international student? Even if you're not an international student, if you're coming from Kansas City or from outside of the uh, Missouri area, um, you know, you'll know far in advance whether or not you should stay home um, and just do online classes there or if you can come to campus. So we are, I think, really dedicated to making sure that our students know what's up when we know what's up. So definitely keep in tune if you are an international student, an international applicant. Um, definitely keep on our website. Our social media presence has grown um, a lot with this COVID pandemic as well um, and, and with updates on you know, what's happening on campus and what are our thoughts with that. So make sure to follow us, follow us on Instagram, follow us on um, uh, you know, Facebook and make sure that you are getting the most up-to-date information. That's kind of our, our current plan. We're still 
planning on you know being able to start in the fall and have everyone because we miss you guys i don't know if i can speak for lauren and jenny and will um but we miss you guys we want you back so thanks for that question um what other questions do you all have for me Um, and you can raise your hand. Um, there's a, um, a function where you can raise your hand. If you're still trying to get that question typed out, you can just say, hey, I do have a question. Um, or you can, um, like I said, request a, a private Zoom meeting if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with one of our staff members. Um, while I wait for a question, I do want to talk to you a little bit about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the other resources that we have on campus. Um, that we haven't already kind of gone through. So one, one important resource to really remember is our Kinkle Center. So that is uh, for academic student success. And the Kinkle Center actually includes a lot of different components for students to make sure that you're gonna be able to be successful in the classroom and also outside the classroom studying. Um, so the Kinkle Center for academic student success um, that includes our free tutoring on campus. So students are able to uh, get up to six hours of free tutoring a, uh, a week. Um, and that can be in your basic English classes, your math classes, or that can be in a cybersecurity class um, where it's talking about coding and you're not, you're like me and you're really kind of not strong with the technology. And so you're like, I don't know how to code um, and I need help with this if I'm gonna pass this class. So you can actually go to the Kinkle Center and get connected with um, different um, peers on campus. So um, people that you are in the classes with, it's not, me giving you tutoring, but it's someone um, who knows where you're coming from, they're learning along with you, but they are getting it and so that they, they can then, um, you know, explain to you in a different way than the professor can, um, you know, what this, what this means. Um, so we've got the free tutoring. Uh, we also I'm just going to add also yeah. there, Justin, that like some of our departments um, offer additional tutoring. It's connected with the Kinkle Center, which is our academic support, but upperclassmen or they'll have study groups within the discipline. So that's very robust. Again, the commitment to like your success. And I'll say um, even in this last semester of transition, we saw that the Kinkle Center services went virtual as well. And so, um, you know, that will be available in maybe a different form, but it will be available Absolutely. also. Same. Thanks for that. Are you going to, I should have talked about this as faculty, but like if you have any accommodation requirements, like if in high school you received extended test taking time or any disability requirements, um, that is all taken care of and managed and to the utmost privacy, but also like the center discloses it to the faculty who are mandated to support those. So we're very accustomed to that, whether we have captioning on our videos or in our classes or an interpreter or extended test taking time or note taker, all of that is something that is very common and um, demonstrates the commitment to your academic success also. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Jenna. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so we have um, academic accommodations. We have free tutoring. We also have a writing center. If you're um, someone who needs uh, help with grammar, help with editing uh, any of your essays for class. Um, we have a testing center for students who uh, need to take any placement uh, exams or any exams if you want to take a, um, a test to say, uh, hey, I don't need to take this class. I'm already, I got the knowledge. I want to take the, the next level of that class. Um, then we have those exams on in the testing center as well. Um, we, um, we have our career center as well. Uh, let's talk about that resource. So that is where our students can uh, go to get connected to different internship opportunities in the St. Louis area and also beyond. So we have students who have um, you know, gone to Boeing. We have students who have gone to um, you know, MasterCard, uh, students who are interning and doing student teaching in the, um, the St. Louis area in, all, in you know, any K through 12 classroom experience. Um, and that's where you can, on top of connecting with your professor uh, and asking them if they know of any internship opportunities in the St. Louis area, you can always go to the Career Center and they can help you out with that as well. So, um, yeah, tons of other different um, uh, resources uh, and things that really can kind of help you, again, service your whole student. Um, you can see Jenna actually uh, posted in the group chat uh, talking about our librarians and helping you with research. Um, you can see also in the group chat, she talked a little bit about the Counseling Wellness Center. Um, so we do offer uh, counseling services. We also have a nurse on campus as well. Um, so we have those resources. Uh, as far as um, 
you know, our uh, students from different backgrounds. So just kind of let you know, we have about 40% of our total student population identifying as non-white. Uh, we also look at diversity as far as um, your gender expression, um, sexual orientation. We look at diversity as far as if you're a first generation student. So whether or not your, um, your parents went to college and got a degree, um, if you are a student from a lower income background, we look at diversity in a lot of different ways and we have a lot of different resources to help um, students feel like they are still a part of that uh, community um, while being in, in community on our campus with Fon Fon. So we have the Black Student Union, we have 1G, which is our peer mentoring program for first generation students. We've got study abroad opportunities, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we just have a lot of different opportunities to get involved in different areas on campus to help you feel supported and, and again, be a part of something smaller where you can um, you know, really find your niche. But then also that, that same resource does a lot of education on Fonfon's campus to help people who are not maybe of this diverse background um, understand what it means to be a student of this background and be in education and why it's important to really think about the ways that we are different and also think about the ways that we're the same. Um, so a lot of different um, resources um, that Fonfon offers. Um, I know that we are, we're at 410 right now. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, if you do need to go, definitely feel free to, uh, to leave this chat. Um, let me know too, if you want to email me. So you actually got the email um, to join this chat from me. Um, email me and let me know what you thought about this. Do you, did you like the virtual preview day? Do you hate it? Do you think we need to get someone else that's not me talking to you all? Um, you know, whatever it is that you are, uh, you're thinking about your experience with this, let us know for sure. We love that. Um, and again, like I said, I'm gonna stay on for a little bit longer to connect anyone that wants to talk to um, a uh, admissions counselor one-on-one. -on -one. Otherwise, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to have done this and for you to have been a part of it. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon. Okay, so <laughs> yay! That looks like all the students are gone. Um, so no one wanted to talk one on one, but that's okay. Um, so I'm glad that I had you guys on standby in case we did want um, to have a one on one Zoom meeting with anyone. Um, it's four eleven, so I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. Um, thoughts, constructive feedback. What do you think we? Still recording. Oh, we are still recording, yes. Um, how do I? <laughs> <laughs>